On today's show, I'll be showing you more of my interview with Summer Homes at Court, Director of Smart Energy Council and Senior Advisor at University of Melbourne's Climate and Energy College. And in this episode, we'll be talking about coal and when it might exit our energy mix. It's fascinating stuff and I'm really surprised by some of Simon's insights into it. Enjoy. Australia's energy mix is changing for the better. Coal is still a predominant source of power, but with renewables taking over in this space and coal power plants set to retire in the next 20 years, there's a fear by some that we still need them. However, with rising running costs, climate targets in most parts of the world, and institutions not prepared to invest in them, coal's demise is imminent. So it seems that coal is yeah, like drawing to a close. Is this correct and why is that? Yeah, so Australia's coal is in uh, is in a long decline. Um, 2008 was our peak coal in Australia, and back then, coal um, uh, outgenerated renewables uh, 16 to one back in 2008. Yeah. Uh, here we are in 2021, and it's um, we're we're right on about two to one at the wow. moment. So yeah. the the ratio has fallen dramatically. So that's coal falling significantly, and renewables increasing yeah. significantly. Um, AEMO, which is the energy market operator, puts out a, a report every two years, the, the integrated system plan. Mm -hmm. And one of the scenarios, it's a number, about five different scenarios. One of them is called step change. Mm. Under that scenario, uh, we'll be almost out of coal in 2040. We'll be down to, um, well, sorry, we'll, we'll be up to 96% renewable in 2042. Um, that's if that scenario plays out. Mm. Um, and what's amazing is that here we are just a year after that report came out and we are tracking faster than that fastest scenario. So I think it's fair to say that most coal in Australia will be gone in the 2030s. And really it's um, uh, the, the, the big question right now is, is that early 2030s or late 2030s? But one way or the other, almost all coal will be out of Australia in the 2030s. Jeez, that's, that's truly significant. And thinking then about um, that, uh, my feeling is we don't really have a transition plan right now around how that's going to be exiting the market, how they're going to be supporting the workers and so on and so forth. Do you see a future for coal in any way, shape or form? Yeah, well, I think we oversimplify coal. There's really, if, if you think there's, there's really three kinds of coal that we, uh, that we talk about in Australia when we talk about coal. There's uh, export thermal coal. So it's the coal that we send overseas from other people's power stations. There's export metallurgical coal. That's the coal we send overseas um, for, uh, for for making steel. And then we have the domestic coal sector. A small amount of it goes to, um, to making steel, but most of our domestic coal uh, goes to generating, generating power. Now that ends up actually being a very small part, like less, less than 20% of the coal mine in Australia is used for coal power. Oh. And in that, in, in that industry, in the coal power industry in Australia, there are only 10,000 workers. Now, every, of course, you know, every, every worker is, is really important. Um, and, uh, you know, we should make an effort when a, when an industry, uh, um, starts shutting down, we should make an effort to make sure those workers transition well into the next sector. We didn't do that for uh, for the automotive industry. We didn't do that for uh, blockbuster employees or the one hour photo or uh, you know all the other industries that come and go very quickly without even being noticed. But with only 10,000 employees in the coal power sector in Australia, we can afford to look after them, make sure that they either transition to um, retirement because the average age of coal worker is well above or coal power worker I should say is, is well well above uh, the um, normal the workforce average mm. um, or uh, many of them um, most of them who um, have skills will transfer into into other industries might be renewables but it doesn't have to be they're, they're very transferable skills electricians and fitters and turners mm -hmm. uh, machine operators um, control room uh, operators uh, yeah, so it's look. It's and, and one thing about a lot of these transitions happen really quickly. If you think um, blockbuster video to Netflix, probably a five-year transition. One-hour photo to digital iPhones, um, that was probably a three or four-year transition. These things happen really quickly. Yeah. The coal transition in Australia, ten to fifteen years, um, plenty of notice. Uh, there, there's there's really I think not much concern about us being able to do this well. And in terms of um, thinking about like Germany, who I believe had a plan in place for like, like at least 20 years and they signaled to the market, um, both the operators, the employees, 
the whole gamut, the community that supports them, that this is coming. Um, do you feel that this is something that should be happening in Australia or is it just going to be a natural thing? Germany hasn't had anywhere near the, um, uh, well, coal hasn't been anywhere near as much of a political football in Germany as it has been in Australia. Mm. And that has allowed them to have mature conversations much earlier than we have had. Mm. One of uh, one of the key um, developments in, in Germany was the development, it was the, the coal commission, um, which met over about a two year period. Mm. And it had power companies, unions, uh, uh, government representatives, um, uh, consumer advocates, all together uh, on one commission and um, you know a large uh, yeah, I've seen photos and it looked like it was 20 30 40 people sitting around um, working um, you know uh, regular meetings over a two-year period to come up with an equitable uh, but science-based exit plan mm -hmm. um, you know that what you know where they could be sure that they could keep the lights on mm -hmm. and they could be sure that employees uh, wouldn't be worse off you know one of their uh, key requirements is that nobody would lose a job, um, that everyone would be looked after getting into either their next job uh, or if they wanted to retirement. So they they took a, um, you know, I think a, a very uh, consultative process uh, and um, they, they you know, brought it, had, had full, um, you know, very, very strong support across mo most of the political spectrum. Very different in Australia where it's, um, seen as very controversial to talk about the end of coal, even though everyone, including those in the coal industry, mm. uh, know that the days of burning coal for power in Australia are uh, in short number. Uh, recently, there's been some headlines around brownouts, that is like blackouts with um, a coal generation strata. Are you able to talk to us about that? Yeah, sure. So there, it, it's not unusual for there to be, um, uh, for large power stations to trip. Um, I mean, there, there are several hundred trips a year, which whereas, um, like a circuit breaker going off, well, all of a sudden you'll lose the load, uh, you, you lose the generation rather of a of a generator um, in an instant. Um, two, uh, well, two very significant power events of the last couple of weeks: the Calide uh, Calide C Unit Four power station up uh, in Queensland, one of Australia's newest power stations at, at um, newest coal power stations at twenty years old. Um, mm. It's one of these um, quote heli coal, you know. Um, uh, and I've got to use quotes because they, they call it high efficiency, low emissions. It's not high efficiency and it's not low emissions, but mm -hmm. it is about one of the highest efficiency power station, coal power stations in Australia. The generator had a massive mechanical malfunction, um, breaking the shaft of uh, the turbine. Uh, it flew, it flung a 300 kilogram piece of uh, shrapnel uh, and embedded it into the ceiling of the building. Cool. shut the generator down and it's at least a 200 million dollar repair bill uh, it also shut down the other unit that's sitting in the same turbine hall um, that'll probably come back into service in the next couple of weeks mm. but it could be a full year before this station comes out at the moment queensland says they're going to repair it and return it to service mm. but there are um, uh, a lot of energy experts saying um, you yeah, know that we don't need that coal capacity um, queensland has surplus coal capacity right now mm. uh, it should take that insurance money and put it into battery uh, and um, uh, Queensland could could absolutely do with um, putting some um, significant you know, mega batteries in uh, the parts of its grid that are relatively weak or have a lot of renewables coming in. Yeah, so definitely. that's the Calide power station yeah. in Victoria. Our largest power station down here, uh, Yalorn, mm. uh, has um, uh, uh, a great big coal mine attached to it, which is flooded with the heavy rains in Victoria the last couple of weeks. And uh, that's significantly cut back on their ability to, uh, to to bring coal up to the power station. They have um, a few days worth of coal uh, in storage. Um, so they're, they're rationing. They've, they've taken three of the four units offline and that will extend um, the time that it's allowed, you know, that it's able to generate before they run out of coal. Mm. Um, they're, they're confident they might get some um, uh, mining back up and going, but there's also a risk that the river uh, that's been diverted around the coal mine might flow back in as it did in 2012. So we've got a significant amount of generation out at the moment in uh, on the east coast of Australia. And so we're seeing um, very high prices uh, in, in the evenings. Um, 
for those who watch the the, the spot markets. Yeah, I do. And uh, we even <laughs> you do you the yeah. amber customers. So I, I watch yeah. it closely. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, uh, I got I got a notification this morning. Um, you know, quite quite rare uh, to get a note. You know, to, to get warnings of high prices in in the um, you know the morning the morning peak. It's normally mm-hmm. reserved for the afternoon. Yeah. So. Yeah, as these assets age, um, you know, you, you expect to see more. You know, a coal power station is a bit like a like an old car. You can keep them going. You just have to put more money into the maintenance, and the maintenance gets more expensive as they get older. Yeah, good good analogy. I like that one. A big thank you to Simon for helping with this interview. It really was some awesome sage advice. And hey, guys girls if you want to actually see the video in full right now consider joining me over here on patreon where from as little as two dollars fifty per month you can see this and a heck of a lot more and and if you haven't already consider subscribing it's free and otherwise you be good and you be great mm-hmm.